What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. We're going to continue the series by taking a look at one of Pokemon's basic movement mechanics in the overworld, and that is ledge jumping. Generally, ledge jumping can be done in three directions, left, right, or down. And that's going to be the same that we do here because we want to keep it the same as the Pokemon games are themselves. All right, let's hop right into it. Go ahead and make sure you have one of your levels open and click on the tiles somewhere so your tile map pops up in the bottom. On the right hand side in the inspector, go to your tile set and you're going to want to add something called a custom data layer. And we're going to add some custom data to certain tiles, specifically the ledges, to know which direction we should be jumping over them. What we're going to do is we're going to add a brand new custom data and it's going to be of a type string and you're going to give it the name ledge, all in capitals. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your tile set and you're going to find the ledges that you want to add these properties to. I'm just going to do one set of ledges here. You can do them all if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the paint properties. I'm going to select my ledge from the custom data and then I'm going to add left to the ledges I can jump over on the left hand side. I'm going to add right to the ledges I can jump on the right hand side and then down for any of the ledges I can jump over when I'm moving down. Be careful not to add this property to any of the corner ledges or anything, or you're going to get some weird results. It also should be noted that all of these ledges already have a collider on them. So all of them have a full collider covering their whole square. If your ledges don't have a collider over them, make sure they have a collider, or we won't detect them when we try and jump over them. And then before I edit any of my code, I'm gonna go ahead and move my spawn point right next to my ledges just for some quick testing. And then finally, just spin up the game real fast and make sure they have colliders on them and try and walk into them. And because we haven't put the code in yet, you're just gonna hit them like you would any normal boundary. So this is working the way we want it to so far. Now it's time to do some scripting. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you're using. And let's go to our enums file, and we're gonna add a little enum that's gonna tell us the difference between walking and jumping. Inside of your characters region, or wherever you wanna put it, let's create a brand new enum called our E character movement. The reason we're putting the E in front is because we have multiple scripts called character movement, so we need to distinguish between them. Inside of it, you're just gonna have two values, walking and jumping. I'm gonna leave them as caps for now. Once you do that, we're gonna to go to our character movement script and actually implement the jumping. There's a few modifications we're gonna to have to make to things that already exist here. For example, right now, all of the movement is solely based on walking, but since we're adding multiple movement types, now we're gonna make something a little more generic. Underneath our is walking variable, let's export a couple new variables. First, we're gonna do a public vector to start position. We're going to need to save our start position for jumping because we use, um, we use a parabolic function to kind of simulate that curve of the character jumping. So we need to keep track of where the person actually started. Next, we'll create a public bool is jumping similar to our is walking. Also set that equal to false. Next, we're going to export three floats. We're going to need our jump height, which we're going to default to 10. You can adjust these to make your jump look different. We're going to do a lerp speed, and I'm going to set this to two. And then finally, a progress. And this just keeps track of how far we are in our movement between the two tiles. And that's going to be zero. That will be reset every time we start a new jump. Again, you can play around with these to kind of make the jump look how you want. Also, we're going to add an E character movement enum, and we're going to set the default equal to walking. Next, what we're gonna do is inside of this signal here, we're gonna replace start walking with start moving. And we'll go through the file and change all of the definitions, but instead of start walking, we're gonna change it to start moving so it can handle different movement types. Next, inside of our process function, we're gonna add our jump function, kind of like we have our walk function here, and also pass in the delta. Next, we're gonna to check to see if our character is idling. And here we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna to check to see if we're not moving and we're not currently pressing anything in the is action just pressed from our modules uh, static class. And if that's the case, we're gonna emit a signal and that signal name dot animation is going to be idle. 
We currently have it defined somewhere else in the file, but I'm actually moving it here because this is the only place it really needs to be at this point, especially when we add, start adding all different movement types. I just want the idle to be called from one place. Next, inside of the is moving function, you're gonna add an or statement and add the is jumping variable to it. So now if we're walking or jumping, we are considered to be moving. The next thing we're gonna do is figure out whether or not the tile map layer inside of our collider type should return true or false. And that's because now some of the tile map layer collisions should return false because we're gonna jump in a specific direction. We don't want the tile map layer here returning true and blocking any chance of our movement. So we're gonna have some very specific cases where if the target direction or the player direction, sorry, and the direction defined in our custom data on our tile map match, then the player should be able to move through that collider. Okay, so what we're gonna do is replace this bool value with a function that's gonna return a bool for us. We're gonna call it get tile map layer collision, and it's gonna take two inputs. So right here, we're gonna pass them in, and then we'll define the function. The first argument, you're gonna pass in the collider as a tile map layer, and then you're gonna pass in your adjusted target position. So what we're going to do is get the tile data from that position and then figure out whether or not the custom data matches the direction that we're moving. Define your function with a tile map layer and a vector to adjusted target position. Once you do that, we're going to have to define a couple of variables to help us out. First, we're going to create a vector to I tile coordinates, and this is going to be equal to our tile map layer dot local to map and we're gonna pass in our adjusted target position. This will give us the coordinates of our cell on our tile map. And then you're gonna make a new tile data variable, and that's gonna be equal to tile map layer dot get cell tile data. And then you're gonna pass in the tile coordinates that you just created. That way you can get the tile data for the specific tile that you wanna know about. Next, you can just do a quick check to see if the tile data is null or not. And if it is just return true, that means just create a collision. We don't have to go any farther than this. After that, you're gonna create a new var, call it ledge direction. And this is going to be called from tile data dot get custom data. And then you're gonna pass in the word ledge, all capitals like you did in the custom data layer. And you're gonna cast that to a string because you know what type of data it is. And then you could check to see if the ledge direction is equal to null just to return true. I think in Godot, it would return as an empty string, but just put this here just in case so you don't get any errors. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just throw a little logging statement just to check what the ledge direction is, if one is returning at all. And then finally, inside of this, you are going to create a switch and you're going to pass in the ledge direction for it. And you're going to create three cases, one for down, one for left, one for right, and then just the default case that returns true. And inside of it, what you're going to do is check to see if the character input dot direction is equal to vector two dot down in the case of down vector two dot left in the case of left and vector two dot right in the case of right. In all three cases, if the if statement is true, set your e character movement to be the jumping enum and then return false because again, when you return false, it's going to avoid the collision. It's not gonna actually have a collision. And that should be all you need for your switch case. Let's keep going down the file. The next thing you're going to do is change your start walking method to be called start moving. And that will get rid of that first error up at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to check a couple things inside of this function. Now, after our logging statement, instead of setting is walking equal to true, we're actually going to put an if statement here. And we're going to check to see if our E character movement is equal to jumping. If that's the case, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to make sure our progress is set to zero because we haven't started our jump yet. We're gonna set our start position equal to our character dot position. So whatever position we're at now is our start position. And then our target position, we can just copy and paste the previous target position. But what we're gonna do is throw some brackets around the grid size and multiply it by two. And the reason we do that is because we're not moving to the next square, we're moving two squares over because we have to jump over the ledge. Make sure your is jumping is set to true. And in the else block, then you can just put the is walking equal to true. Next, inside of our walk function, we can get rid of the else block that emits the idle signal since we're just taking care of that in our process now. We're gonna change our stop walking function to actually say stop moving. And you can go ahead and just change the name of this now. And inside of the stop moving function, we can go ahead and add our is jumping equal to false as well. 
And you can change your E character movement back to walking because walking will always be the default. Next, we're gonna create our jump function. Similar to the walk function, it's gonna accept a double delta. And you're gonna to check to see if you are jumping. If that's the case, we're gonna go ahead and fill out some variables here. Your progress is gonna be a plus equal to your lerp speed times your float delta. Your vector two position is going to be your start position dot lerp because we're gonna be using interpolation here for the movement and you're gonna pass in your target position and your progress. Next, you're gonna create your parabolic offset. So this is gonna change the, uh, the Y coordinate to make it look like you're jumping. And this is where we have that parabolic function that I was talking about earlier, like your uh, X squared plus Y equals whatever. I can't remember the exact terms from math, but I looked this up a little bit to help me. But basically this is just a parabolic function filled out. So this is gonna be equal to the jump height multiplied by, and then in brackets, we're gonna do a one minus four times and then progress minus 0.5F multiplied by itself. You can adjust these to, again, make your jump look different if you want. And then you're gonna set your position dot Y minus equal your parabolic offset. And then you're gonna make your character dot position equal to that new position that you've calculated. Again, I am by no means a math wizard. I just looked up some functions and kind of figured it out this way. Use chat GPT or Gemini or whatever you need to help you, but this is what looks good in my eyes. Again, change it to be any way you want. Finally, let's go ahead and check to see if our progress is greater than or equal to one. We know that we've reached 100% of our movement and we can go ahead and stop moving. Just like with walking, the stop moving will call the snap, uh, snap to grid just to make sure that everything lines up and you're not on some weird coordinate. So let's just go through and double check the file and make sure that we didn't miss anything. Uh, you can see that the function where we calculate if the tile map layer uh, has a collision or not is giving me a little error. And that's because it doesn't like the return true at the end of the switch case. It feels like I still am not returning a pool that way. So let's go ahead and take that out and just add it to the bottom of the, uh, of the function. And then that error goes away. And oh, make sure the parabolic offset is minus equals. Otherwise, you're going to get some weird results. And I think that's everything. So let's fire up the game and see what happens. I'm going to go back to Godot and I'm going to fire up my project here and I'm going to pray. And you can see when I hit a certain direction that the character is actually doing a nice little jump. So I'm going to do it a few more times here. And actually, I'm going to go around and make sure that um, I'm not able to cross over in the wrong direction. And you can see here the jump works in each direction. And it looks pretty good. So you could actually do a couple things with this now that you have the jump working. You could do something like add a little shadow. You could have it make a jump sound or something like that. But as far as the ledge jumping goes, I think that pretty much covers it. So we're going to call it here on this video. And I'm not sure which route the next video is going to take for this one, but it could be something to do with the UI, perhaps the messaging system or something like that. That being said, if you like what you see so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling really generous, you can support the channel by buying me a coffee. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning back in and we'll see you in the next one.